Glider, you turned around and you were not quick enough to react to what you realized and you just see as the oh, surge of no. electricity knocks Scarlet Sentinel out cold. What do you do? Uh, am I fast enough to run to her to try to catch her before she collapses like a <laughs> like a sack of bricks? Oh, honey, I'm like 160 pounds of pure muscle. <laughs> oh gosh. Roll to unleash your powers. As you just yeah, yeah, yeah. sprint. <laughs> I'm just kind of fast. Oh no. Yeah, I got a five. You are not so enough, you trip skid. <laughs> oh no. So you aren't able to um I trip catch this scarlet. Yeah, I like try to go too fast and the like uh carpet curls up underneath me and I just like face plant. <laughs> myself <laughs> on the carpet. <laughs> so oh. you, you are not able to catch the Scarlet Sentinel. Yeah. And she yeah. just drops to the ground. Great. And then the camera Oof. pans back up. <laughs> you said that was an 8 from Kid Phoenix? Yeah. And you are going to um, neutralize your opponent. Yeah, at least for at now. At least for a while. Yeah. What does it look like? As the camera kind of pans back up and we're checking in on how Kid Phoenix is doing, Kid Phoenix is doing something very different, I think, than the way their powers normally manifest. Normally they just use their telekinesis and like they, they try to like announce everything with flair. But when they step forward, instead of doing their usual like, Wow! I'm gonna stop you, villains! He starts like that, and then he goes, Hey, guys, I'm going to be real straight up and to the point with you. What we're going to do now is you're going to step away from the bomb, and you're not going to hurt any civilians, and we're all going to walk away. You will walk away from here a lot less free than I will. Does that make sense? And then they bring their hand down, and rather than, like, picking each of them up individually, they just use their telekinesis as, like, a flat press localized on each of the the mannequin villains and just smush them to the ground not enough to like hurt or like kill them but enough to like they can't move and this is probably more localized and specific to their powers than they use normally they use it for or he uses it for mobility to like get from place to place and like to hold villains and throw stuff catch other things but this is very much like these three people smush so it's a lot more focused and Fitting with the adult mood theme of wield your powers, I'm doing it with precision and grace. You have them pinned in a display of power that hasn't really been seen before coming from you specifically. It's a little dark in here because like some of the power's been shut off, so... I don't know, we'll see what the others see when they get up there once we get back to them. But the villains are currently secured. So, Glider, what are you going to do now? I scramble forward, and I I get to Scarlet, and I'm like, Scarlet, 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 okay, I don't think they'll actually kill us, so you're probably fine, are you okay? Are you alive? Are you breathing? Are you awake? And I'm just like doing that thing where I like pat your face really fast, and I'm like, are you awake? Well, to comfort or support somebody as you attempt yes. to revive Scarlet. You can tell she's breathing. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, I don't have a penalty for that, so. Yeah. Ooh, and I have good <laughs> mundane. Nine. As you're saying this, Scarlet, you're aware of someone repeating your hero name to you and patting your face frantically as you slowly come back to consciousness. Unconscious is, is technically not a condition, but I think it, in this case it counts as Ow. a condition. As you come to, 
I, I hold my hand up to get her to stop slapping my face. <laughs> I, I, I'm awake. Oh, oh, good. Okay, good. You're awake. Okay. Yeah, the bomb in your pocket exploded. Because you put a bomb in your pocket. <laughs> Don't do that. Well, I told you, I told you it wouldn't really be super deadly. That was pretty bad. Okay, uh, we we gotta get upstairs. You almost look like a ginger <laughs> porcupine. Well, if it isn't, there are consequences to my actions. My hair is a little like my hair came out of my ponytail and it's like all poofed. Like when you touch one of those little static electricity generators, it just makes your hair go foof. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Shake myself. I'm like, okay. Let's go upstairs. Maybe the stairs. Got one floor. Let's take the stairs. Yeah, stairs. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Yeah. We are hustling. Yeah. So you get upstairs and you see you see Kid Phoenix standing there and all these fellas are like pinned to the ground by something. Ian, I'll let you do the flavor text for any vaguely creepy things that go with this. Oh, sure. If it were bright out, you wouldn't see it. But in the low light, there's almost like a luminescent dark red demonic hands and each of them are what are applying the pressure they don't seem to be tangible in like a physical sense but they're very much like scaly armored clawed hands that are like about the size of a of a whole person just like smushing the the fake villains down uh, directly and you can see there's a look of intense like focus as um thing to keep them down long enough for the device to deactivate and when it does and they show up. They're like just barely hanging on. Also, the, these hands that you see, they're almost like they're not entirely there and they flicker slightly. It's probably not something that's going to get caught on camera. Whether or not you think it's a trick of your imagination is up to you. But it's not something you expect as you come in. Both of you, different levels of fried. We are kind of frizzy looking. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Kid Phoenix <laughs> smells um, slightly singed clothing <laughs> as, you t- as the two of you approach. Running. Yeah, I think the power goes down and we like kick in the door. <laughs> I kick you in the kick door. in the door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> door is kicked. Uh, I think as you do, I kind of like jump a little bit, but I maintain the hold. Hey, just keeping things real situated here. You see a glimpse of those hands, and then they're just gone. But oh, they're, they're yeah, still they pinned. So we saw them for just a second. Okay, yeah. maybe. Okay. So they are—they look like mannequins, right? Yeah, they're—they're they're like tra- um, like training bots. Okay, and they're currently on the floor, and the thing in the middle is deactivated, right? I don't know, roll to assess the situation. Yeah, wait, that's a thing we could do in this game, is... <laughs> yeah. Assess that situation! That's, like, actually a thing. Instead of me just listing everything in the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very nice penthouse. It's so nice! the weird contraption in the middle of it. Oh, gosh. I will also roll... I got a ten. I got an eight. Okay. With eight, you get one question. What here can I use to completely disengage the equipment right in the middle of the room? Is there like a plug-in and a socket? <laughs> Nothing quite that simple, but <laughs> as as you look around and you study this device and you also see the tools, because it looks like they were like putting finishing touches on it, you're able to scan read and you, you think you have a way to if not dissemble this, at least disarm it and make it not an issue. Between your tech skills, I mean, you might need an extra set of hands, but it doesn't look like it's currently active, but you don't know how long they will be until that changes. And for Glider, what are your questions? They're kind of the same question, because I'm I'm wondering how to stop these mannequins. So, I guess... What can I use to kind of impede the mannequins? And maybe what here is the biggest threat? 
you aren't sure how much longer Kid Phoenix can hold these yeah. guys. Yeah. So you you look around and you see like fabric and curtain ropes and um, other things that you could use to pretty quickly tie these guys up with. Mm-hmm. I think they have like actual zip ties that they were using to help secure some of the pieces. You can just use their own zip ties. Okay, I can use their own zip ties. Okay, that's very fun. You just start doing that? Well, yeah, but I gotta unleash my powers, uh, because I want to use my super speed to, like, quickly wrap them up in... Go for it. ...fabric and sheets and zip ties and curtains. (laughs) Yeah. Just become a little whirlwind. It's a four. Another potential. Yeah. You're starting to bustle about to, like, tie these guys up and... You just have a realization that they look like they're built a lot like the mannequins you saw downstairs, which wouldn't have much functionality. They do have the marks of the villains that you were showed. And you're like, this, it feels like we're missing something. And then you see out of the corner of your eye, there's a fourth one. This one's bigger. It looks like it's got more bells and whistles. Because sometimes when you're a hero... You don't always get the most accurate information sometimes. There's something you didn't expect. So you see it, and I think that's why you just kind of skid to a stop as you're like, there's a fourth one, and I think with your insecurity, it's you just kind of freeze. And I think the other two of you do notice as Glider just is rushing forward to tie the mannequins up, and then just stops and sees something and freezes. That's one of the two of you notice there is an additional mannequin that steps into the light and raises what looks like a laser rifle at you. Ah. <sighs> is this is this aimed at me since I'm I'm heading down three of the allies? Probably. I mean, you, you are oh, you no. are pretty threatening. I'm pretty exposed too because I'm, I'm I'm using all my power to hold these guys down. Yeah. Well, they're tied up now. You can disengage with that power. Yeah, sure. yeah. They're not tied up yet. They're not tied oh. up. I I got oh shoot. I got caught up in the, the moment and stopped what I was doing. Yeah. Oh, they're not tied up. Oh no. Uh, so, oh, oh beans. Am I gonna? What does it take? A powerful blow? <laughs> I will give. Cause gliders, a little bit in glider exe has stopped responding for the moment. <laughs> so, Scarlet Sentinel. Roll to defend someone as you see Kid Phoenix is about to get shot. Ooh. <laughs> you can tell it's like an energy weapon, though, so, uh, yeah. Nothing has killed you so far, even the elevator. It would have just kind of, like, shocked you into unconsciousness, and then someone would have come to get you out. <laughs> These tests are meant to be easy, but they're also not created to be deadly. Yeah. I got an 11. Okay. You're my only hope, Scarlet. I rolled nicely. (laughs) (laughs) You keep them safe and choose one. Add a team to the pool, take influence over someone, you can protect or clear a condition. Add a team to the pool. Makes the most sense, because as you... How do you defend Ken Phoenix from what's about to happen? You have a bunch of random materials around you, you are also strong. Yeah. Well, it's a- it's basically a big metal contraption right in front of me, right? Yeah. And it's just random parts kind of, like, sectioned together. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm gonna rip one off, chuck it. Just- Right at the gun. (laughs) <laughs> just rip part of this bomb off and well I was it. already in the process of like dismantling and getting stuff off there so there's one that just had like a screw or two that were partially unscrewed so I just tear it off I'm very strong <laughs> if you were disarming it I think I would also need you to roll to directly engage a threat because you, as you attempt to disarm the bomb first to see how that's going yeah that's true so many rolls, so many things going on. <laughs> so roll plus Ooh. danger. 
That's an eight plus one. So nine. Choose one. Resist your void. Your blows take something from them, creating an opportunity for your allies and surprise or frighten the opposition. I'm gonna go with surprise the opposition that I was able to shut that shit down. Theoretically, it shouldn't have worked what you did, <laughs> but you just find this one piece and you're like, this is a dumb idea. It's either gonna really, it's either going to work immediately or we will all explode. And you just. Yep. I picture what happens right as you notice the, the rifle pointed at Kid Phoenix, who I think you actually know is Marcus. So you just yep. rip the piece out and be are you like overthrowing, overhand throw, frisbee it. Chucking it like a baseball right at the right at the gun, just to at least if they're gonna shoot, it'll aim elsewhere. Roll to unleash your power. Ooh, that's not bad. That's an eight. Okay. So the first shot goes into the floor as this metal like clangs into it, and then it's going to look at you. It is now surprised and impressed. <laughs> it points the gun at you. Glider, what do you do as the shock is wearing off? Yes. And you see your bestie is about to get electrocuted again. Not again. So I still have an arm full of, of draperies and fabric. I'm basically just pivoting my plan at this new mannequin. But I want to basically chunk all the fabric over the top of it so it'll cover its eyes, cover the gun. But then I want to do like a Black Widow flip and like use my martial arts and try to like just take him down with my legs. I will say, so to clear and secure, you take foolhardy action without talking to your team. This feels foolhardy. A. This feels very foolhardy. This also feels like directly engaging a threat. Mm-hmm. So. So, roll plus danger. Mm hmm Ooh, Yahtzee. So that's 12, but my danger's negative one, so it's 11, but... Describe what this looks like as you snap into action after your um, minor freakout and do something that is very dumb. Yes. <laughs> so Scarlet chunks that chunk of metal, hits it, it swings on her. It's not looking at Kid Phoenix, it's not looking at me. I look down, I have an arm full of fabric, and I just kick it into gear, and I zip forward, and I just chunk it all like a like a tidal wave of, of blankets, just over its head, over the gun, and then as it's like reacting to that, I basically kick up, and I snap my legs around his robot head under the blanket, and I use my weight to just flip him, just completely. You're no longer insecure. No. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I picture there's just this moment where we see another Zod bubble. So cool. Holy shit, that worked. That was awesome. Holy shit, that worked. <laughs> oh my god. Amazing. I hope they got that on camera. <laughs> Please make that go viral. Yeah. <laughs> there are still the other three mannequins who are potentially dangerous. But Glider's got the big one under control. So what do you do with these other three? Actually, you probably still have at least some control over them, but you're not. <laughs> it's it's starting to slip. This is a lot. You haven't done this before. Yeah, I guess I'm going to try to provoke someone. I'm going to see, like, if they're robots and they're programmed, you know, respond to situations... It would be, I guess, reasonable for me to be like... Alright, so, like I said, we had a nice deal going. Now, if you want to stop being crushed, let yourselves get tied up right now, and you won't end up like your boss over there. And I'm going to try to kind of provoke them into you know, giving up, so to speak. Roll with superior. Can I give a help, being that I just slammed the big robot into the ground? I will give you a plus one to that, because also, they're a little spooked by you already. Regrettably, even with the plus one, I still got a four. Oh no. I would get a rise out of him, I guess. Um, yeah, so mark potential. 
as they pop out from underneath your telekinesis control and rush oh. you. Oh, jeez. Okay. Oh, no. Because you're a problem. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm i kind of, like, thrown off guard by, like, the force of the, the, the whole thing. And as soon as I start to talk again, I kind of let go of that trance. And they're able to slip out from under the crush. So, question for Scarlet Sentinel. Were you going to help deal with the robot, or were you going to help deal with the smaller ones before all this happened? Like, where were you go- moving towards? Well, Glider seems to be in control of the situation. I'll let her deal with that one. So I am going over to help get Phoenix. Uh, roll to directly engage a threat to see if you can start dealing with some of them before Kit Phoenix gets dogpiled. Be a 10. Okay. Pick two. I'm going to frighten the opposition and resist or avoid their blows. You just washing them battle cry or. Oh, yeah, I can be loud and scary when I need to be. <laughs> Especially now that my hair is like all poofed out, I look kind of crazy. Because, like, it's a lot of hair and it got big. Just a, just a little bit big and like I am covered in like dust and grime from being kind of half blown up earlier so I am not taking any bull from anything and I'm just ready to finish this <laughs> as you cry and charge towards them you are actually able to distract two which leaves okay. one for Kid Phoenix what are you going to do Kid Phoenix as you were being rushed I'm going to attempt to directly engage. That makes sense. Roll plus danger. Uh, my danger is plus two, so much more likely that I succeed. I did not succeed. <laughs> that is a five. <laughs> oh no. It's going great. Oh no. You just get flattened by this mannequin and it's like it's it's got your hands pinned down and it's gonna headbutt you all to take a powerful blow no not like this uh i got a five so i I weather the blow it's like the one you want to roll low on yeah the only time yeah all my good rolls are gone as is normal for most of my games they run out around the halfway point Accurate. You just got headbutted by a robot. Oh, oh, oh gosh, that hurts. Glider, do you want to tie up the one that you have so you can go help your friends? Yes, I'm very quickly tangling it up. And I think I also, it's under the blankets, but I think I kicked the gun away. Yeah. It got at least far enough out of its hands that it can't get it. Yeah, it's very tangled. So yeah, I'm just trying to incapacitate that one. And I'm like, I'm coming, Kid Phoenix! And then um, once that one's, I know he's down, I zip over and I just like elbow drop onto the one that just headbutt you. Directly engage a threat. Yes. That's a seven, but that still works. You pick one. Yeah, I'm creating an opportunity for my allies. So as you elbow drop, you get it in like just the right spot, and this little robot spazzes and it lets go of your your hands, ah. Kid Phoenix. And before we get to your reaction, panning over to Scarlet Sentinel as you are engaging these two robots. Basic, yeah, no, no, I'm going full on strength with this and going for a full punch. Roll to unleash your powers. That would be a seven. Okay. Or we could have it be um, directly engaged with the because you're still engaging with them. That is true. So I could continue to resist and avoid and or avoid their blows. You can take something from them, their arms. Oh, I guess, yeah, take some- I'm gonna take their arms. <laughs> I am taking their arms. A habit we should not get into outside of the practice <laughs> yeah. fights. Unless regular fights, they are robots. Because 
I am a techie, and I kind of think it would be a really cool souvenir. I am... Just have a yeah. bunch of red yeah. bottoms in your room. Just no heads, because they could have cameras. Just build a nightmare suit of robot arms. <laughs> oh god! That's one of our villains is all the robot parts <laughs> that you stole coming together. <laughs> we'll see. So, you had disarm to the robots. <laughs> Disarmed! <laughs> so, Kid Phoenix, what are you doing about the one that is now no longer holding your hands down? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna try to bring it back around and try okay. to once again directly engage a threat. Alright, much better with my plus two, I got a seven. Pick one. Seeing the cue like that these are robots, I'm going to try to take something from them and that something is going to I'm gonna to try to turn it off, basically. Okay. Yeah, like I am gonna to try to find the off switch for this thing. So while it's still on top of you, you just frantically like feel up the robot <laughs> until you find the off switch. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm like, it's like, you know when it's dark and you're trying to, like, find the light switch in your house and you're just, like, trying to make sure you don't, like, step on your cat or something? Like, it's it's like that, but very, about as stressful as one would expect. So it, t- it takes just long enough to feel vaguely awkward, but you do find the off switch. There's a couple of seconds of silence before. Well done, that was one of the more creative approaches we've seen. Congratulations! You saved the hotel, and you passed the test. You are free to go, and we will contact you later with more instructions. Good job, heroes! Jeez. Yes! 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 And I do like a jump and a spin, and I'm like quickly pulling up Kid Phoenix from out from under that mm. robot. I help, and I just kind of like toss it over by the other big robot. Yeah, take that! Oh, that was wild! We did it! Yeah, no, that was... I'm actually... I mean, things got a little hairy near the end, but we... We pulled it off. We did it! I mean, we got kind of electrocuted in the elevator, but it all worked out. It didn't... There wasn't anything lasting, so we're great! And, oh, we handled that! Wow, you were holding them down! Oh my gosh, that was so great! And you ripped their arms off just like it was nothing! Like it was made of tinfoil! Maybe maybe less splitting up next time. We can, we can really kick butt. Did good with the, the big guy over there, so good job. Hey, I'm just prattling on, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, no, I just saw him there, and I was like, okay, I can, you know, I can counterbalance him, and I can throw him, and it's like my chance, and he has a gun. He has a gun? They actually put bombs and guns in here. That's, that's, okay. But we handled it, and we did it. Oh, wow, we did it like a team. And it's, it's weird, because normally I'm, I guess I'm used to what to expect, because I'm always working with the Phoenix, but this is, this is different in, like, a cool way, where I, I didn't know what to expect, yeah. but. Everybody did something cool and fun, and we really showed those robots. Yeah, we so, did. I don't, yeah. And I put my fist out. <sighs> yes. Oh, yeah. No, Scarlet Sentinel's head again. just drops. Oh, no. It's a regular thing. Yes, it is. You remember. <sighs> Get in on this. Come on. Just begrudgingly fist and... What do y'all do afterwards? The rest of the night is yours. We go to, like, a Denny's and just get, like, plates of really greasy breakfast food. And so y'all go to Denny's, still in your superhero get-ups, and just hang out. Probably for the first time all three of you since the Fumigator incident. And come to terms with the fact that you will potentially be getting an invitation from the Hero Institute, which is pretty big. And y'all might become a team, because turns out you work well together. You have been listening to Queen City Supers, a graveyard tape side story using the game Masks. Masks A New Generation is a superhero role-playing game in which a team of young heroes fights villains, saves lives, and tries to figure out who they are. Featuring Caitlyn as Madigan, aka Scarlet Sentinel, the Janus. Jess as Bethany Bertolucci, aka Glider, the Beacon. Ian as Marcus, 
aka Kid Phoenix, The Doomed, and Brianna Jean as the Keeper and Producer.